Surviving Private Practice in Malaysia. Welcome to my video podcast entitled Surviving Private Practice in Malaysia. My name is Dr. Selva. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at Makuta Medical Center, Malacca, Malaysia. This is my first video podcast and I'm excited to record and share this video podcast to all of you. This podcast is entitled, Why I Started This Podcast. I started a blog in the same title last year and I thought that a podcast will be good to reach out to more people. I have been working in private practice in Malaysia for the last 27 years. Many students who want to become doctors and young doctors working in the government hospitals do not know how private practice in Malaysia works. This video podcast is aimed to educate them about private practice in Malaysia. In these podcasts, I will talk about my experience working in private practice in Malaysia. I will discuss on how private practice works. I'll also be speaking to other doctors who are already working in private practice in Malaysia. I'm hoping that by watching this video podcast, you will have a good idea about how private practice in Malaysia works and hopefully you will be better prepared to face private practice when your time comes to move from the government hospitals to private practice. Each year, about 5,000 doctors are graduating from medical colleges just in Malaysia alone. Being a doctor in Malaysia is going to be very competitive. This is more so in the private sector. Everyone entering a medical school is hoping for a successful career as a doctor. However, surviving in private practice is not going to be easy. I come from a poor family. My father was a lorry driver and my mother a housewife who later had to work as a laborer in a factory to supplement our family income. When I was young, my only determination was to do well in my studies so that I could get a scholarship to go to a local university. At first, my father, a public works department or PWD or Jabatan Kerja Raya, lorry driver, obviously wanted me to be a civil engineer. However, due to some turn of events, I managed to get good grades to enter University of Malaya to do medicine. One needs to get top grades to do medicine in University of Malaya in those days. I also secured a Johor State Scholarship. In the university, I was just an average student. After graduating, I did my housemanship at the Kuala Lumpur General Hospital. I was then transferred to Johor Bahru and later served as a medical officer at my hometown, Mersing. Undecided as to whether to do medicine or obstetrics and gynecology, I studied for the part one of both while enjoying the peace and tranquility of the small town. I secured a post of registrar in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Hospital Sultana Amina Johor Bahru in, in 1988. I went to the United Kingdom to work for a year and passed the part two in 1991. On returning to Malaysia, I was a clinical specialist at Hospital Sultana Amina Johor Bahru and later for a short while as a consultant at the Batu Pahat District Hospital. In 1994, after seeing that I do not have much future in the public sector, I decided to move to private practice. I applied to several hospitals in Johor Bahru, but all my applications were rejected. The reasons given were, I was too young, a male gynecologist, and the wrong race. Makuta Medical Center in Malacca, a brand new 600 bedded hospital, offered me a job. Makota Medical Center was built by the Lions Group and its CEO invited all the local doctors in Malacca to join them. Most of the Malacca specialists rejected the offer, so the CEO decided to offer jobs to young doctors from other states. I was offered a job perhaps because he could not attract anyone else. Despite never having been to Malacca before, I took the offer. There are several reasons why I accepted the offer. Firstly, this was the only good offer I had and I did not have much choice. Secondly, I liked the mere size and beauty of the hospital. Thirdly, they also offered me a two months training in laparoscopic surgery at the Chang'an Memorial Hospital, Taiwan. I had always been intrigued by keyhole or laparoscopic surgery and this offer is one I could not refuse. After undergoing training in Taiwan, I came back to practice at Makota Medical Center. As an incentive, the hospital offered all of us a small guaranteed income for one year. The amount was Ringgit Malaysia 7,600, which was twice my government salary at that time, and all of us were very happy with that guaranteed income. Working in a brand new hospital was a real experience. A colleague of mine once told me, you are the wrong age, young, wrong sex, male gynecologist, wrong color, Indian, 
and in the wrong town, don't know anybody in Malacca. How am I going to survive? It was not easy. The first few years were tough as I was sitting in my clinic waiting for patients to walk in. I had to do things differently in order to distinguish myself from all the other obstetrician and gynecologists in town who are more senior and experienced than I am. I dealt in my passion, which is laparoscopic surgery, and aimed to excel in it. I also persuaded the hospital to start an in vitro fertilization or IVF center. I went to train in IVF at King's College, London, and started the Makota IVF Center in 1997. It was the first IVF center south of Kuala Lumpur at that time. I spent three years doing a master's in reproductive medicine. Earlier, after returning from the United Kingdom and working as a specialist in Johor Bahru, I joined a night class to learn how to speak Mandarin. Even though I had all the disadvantages, namely being young, male, Indian, and working in a town where I did not know anyone, I overcame all these difficulties with the things that I could do, namely learn to speak Mandarin so that my Chinese patients can communicate with me, able to do laparoscopic surgery and IVF skills not mastered by other gynecologists in Malacca, and going out to meet general practitioners and the public to tell them I exist and I am worthy alternative to my esteemed colleagues. With hard work, perseverance, and always thinking about my practice in the long run, I managed to survive private practice. Many junior doctors who come to train under me ask me for advice as to how to survive in private practice. I tell them my experience working through all these difficulties I had faced. I thought that collecting my thoughts and writing it down in a blog post and now in this video podcast would benefit young doctors and potential doctors in Malaysia. Even though much of what will be in the podcast will be my experience in private practice, I'll be also speaking to other doctors both in the government, hospital and private practice. I'm hoping to write about their experiences or do an interview with them, which I will post as a video podcast. My wish is that all of you can have an insight about what private practice is like in Malaysia so that you can plan your future and succeed. My best wishes to all of you on your career. Please do subscribe to this channel and help me spread the word about this channel to your friends. I hope to post a video podcast every week. Bye for now until we meet again.